sister and brother delegates, invited guests, ILW President Willie Adams, and all of our ILW family, please stand and welcome our international president, Mr. Harold J. Daggett. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sisters and brothers of the ILA, delegates, guests, welcome to the 55th Convention, the greatest union in America and around the world, the International Longshoremen's Association. Welcome to our distinguished guests, leaders from labor, industry, politics, and religion. Welcome to our honorable senator, from New Jersey, Robert Menendez, the ILA. <laughs> the ILA would have to search long and hard to find a better friend in Congress over many decades than Senator Bob Menendez. Welcome to my labor colleagues and the labor general president, Terry O'Sullivan, my friend, my brother of the Labor's Union, the greatest guy in the world when it comes to labor. To all our distinguished guests, my ILA Executive Council and delegates, and guests to this 55th ILA Convention, welcome to South Florida. How did everybody enjoy the pool yesterday with the band? Come on, give it up. That was some rock band, right? It looked like MTV out there. Well, they're going to play again at the pool party Thursday night. You know, I don't get going with a speech unless I tell a joke. But it's hard to find a clean joke today, you know? And especially with kids here and everything, but I'll give it a shot. Two young boys are raking leaves in the backyard. The older boy says to the young boy, we have to start cursing. When we go in the house, I'll say hell and you say ass. They go into the house and the mother asks what they wanted for breakfast. The older boy says, ah, hell, I'll have a bowl of cereal. The mother smacks the boy and chases him up to his room. She turns to the young boy and asks him if he wanted anything. He says, well, you can bet your fat ass I'm not going to order Cheerios. <laughs> All right, we loosen this crowd up a little bit. Richard? Today and this week, we are going to demonstrate to all that we are ILA strong and a global power. We are so happy to be back here at the Diplomat Resort Hotel in Hollywood, Florida. Situated between our great ILA port of Miami and the Port Everglades. And we're happy to welcome back to the ILA stage director from the Port of Miami, Juan Corella. We are here in Florida, a state that will be play an important role next year when America holds the presidential elections. As always, we intend to be politically active, and our goal is simple. We must put more labor-friendly candidates into office, those that honor their pledges and protect the American middle class. We We will talk a lot about that throughout the week. Dennis Daggett, my son, my friend, my go-to guy, thank you for opening up this convention session as a temporary convention chair and for introducing me. Thanks, Dennis. You and my other son, John, and my daughter, Lisa, fill me with so much joy and pride. I'm proud of all of you and grateful all three of you have added another generation of Daggett's to the ILA waterfront. For almost 100 years, members of the Daggett family has been part of the New York and New Jersey waterfront. Five generations of family involvement. 
As proud as I am to have my grandson, Parker Bess, a working member of ILA Local 1804-1, today's opening session, I would have loved my father, my grandfather, and all my uncles, <clears throat> who were a big part of the ILA's early growth, to be with us today. That famous cat in the hat, Dr. Seuss, once said, don't cry that it's over. Be happy that it happened. So instead of crying that those great ILA legends from my family and others are no longer with us, I am happy to have known them, loved them, and learned from them. Since I mentioned my three children and my grandson, Parker, please allow me a moment of personal pride. I'd like to ask my children, Dennis, John, and Lisa, my grandchildren, Parker, Jordan, my son-in-law, Leonard, Alexa, Ava, Joey, and John, my daughter-in-laws, Marissa and Bridget, my sister, Marilyn, and her husband, General Patrick Kelly, my great-grandson, Waylon, and his mom, Elisa, to please stand up for a generation of my Daggett family. I love all you guys. Please stand up. I mentioned your name. Come on, stand up. I'm gonna. What a great week we have had last week at the Diplomat Resort for over 36 Atlantic Coast District Convention. I want to congratulate Mike Vigoron, the president of the Atlantic Coast District, the officers and delegates to the ACD Convention for your successful meeting last week. Congratulations, Mike. Jimmy and Bernard, on your re-elections to top leadership ports with the ACD and to all my ACD executive board. Shortly, I will bang the gavel to officially begin this 55th convention. Just imagine what it must have been like 127 years ago when the first ILA president, Danny Keefe, banged the gavel to open up ILA's very first convention held in Detroit, Michigan. Could those ILA delegates in 1892 imagine how their infinite waterfront union would blossom and grow into a worldwide power of labor force? Our ILA delegates to this convention in 2019, like those men along the shore that came together in 1892, shared a belief that united, they could face any challenges. United, they could achieve decent wages, safe working conditions, and a comf comfortable retirement. And they did. From the Great Lakes port, the ILA grew along the Atlantic and Gulf Coast, and Canada and Puerto Rico. For more than a century, our union has been a, strong, a story about fathers and mothers passing down their longshoring trade to their children hoping and trusting that they would do better. For more than a century, our ILA union has moved our nation's commerce and goods on and off ships. Yes, we look to the future with optimism and hope. This convention affords us this time to plan where we are going. But we never forget those ILA heroes for one single generation ago to a century ago who built this industry and built this ILA. Men like my father, who lived in a waterfront neighborhood <clears throat> and went to work with a hook over his broad shoulders, salty language on their tongues, and a deep love for their union and their profession. From all walks of life, backgrounds, ILA working gangs have presented families and solidarity better than anybody. We have powerful labor leaders with us this morning. AFL CIO President Richard Trumka. Come oh, on, get up. Who once led the United Marine Workers as a president of 
Mine, excuse me, I'm sorry. That's because I haven't had a drink in a month and a half. Who once led the United Mine Workers as the president and laborer, President Terry O'Sullivan. They come from strong union families. They know, like we do, that all the benefits we enjoy today, decent wages, first-class health care, plan and pension benefits that allow us to retire in dignity, came about through the blood and the sweat and the dedication of our ILA forefathers. Some gave their lives for this mighty and just labor cause. You heard in the press today that one of our lady longshoremen was killed two weeks ago down in Texas. I got to go off the record here a minute. Uh, too many people are getting killed in our industry. Uh, like, between the last two years, there was 14 people killed. I know management's sitting here, so I want them to hear this. We need to train longshoremen, checkers, and maintenance before they go to work on that pier. What happened up in the Port of Newark, they brought a guy in, sent him right on the pier to go to work. No training at all. He's driving a high-low with two bundles of steel, and he's looking through the middle. A, a woman checker stepped out between, between the containers. He knocked her over. He didn't even know it. Knocked her over and drove over on the, with the high-low. Her son was standing right there. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. If he was trained right, he would know that if he had two bundles of steel on, on the blades, he would drive in reverse so he could see. And that looked between two bundles. So these little things is what happens and people get killed. 14 people killed in the last two years. It's got to stop. They have families. They have children. It, it, you know, we just say, oh, somebody got killed. Oh, that's a shame. You know, no, think about it. It's a damn shame. We're in an industry that's so damn dangerous. And most of all of our unions is like that. So I asked management, please take a second look at this. It's worth the money to go and train us before we get on those piers and we wind up killing somebody. So please. I am humble since 2011 to have served as your international president, only one of nine men in 127 years of history to apply this position. I am grateful for your support of my executive offices, my ILA executive council, but mostly important to you, the ILA rank and file members, for your support and the encouragement you give me so abundantly. We have done amazing work together these past eight years, twice negotiating a six-year master contract with USMX that protects our members and their families. Now, off the cuff again. They gave us the six-year contract they knew I was going to stay firm. They knew I was going to go on the street with you guys. I will never let automation replace our jobs. Never. But let me tell you. Thank you. I made a commitment in my executive office and my vice president to management. In return, they need to have 30 to 35 moves an hour on a ship. You presidents of the local, you got to enforce that. You vice presidents out there got to enforce that. We can't get sloppy. That was the deal. 30 to 35 moves an hour. They're happy with that. I'm happy with that. Then we'll get another six years. They told me if you can do that, they won't even think about automation. But if you don't do it, you're putting this union in jeopardy. And I know we can do it, right? Right. We will discuss in great length during this week the remarkable contract successfully negotiated last year. 
a contract that protects you, your membership, and your families from automation. Terry O'Sullivan is in the House, and Richard Trumka. I must address a critical, important issue that affects all union members across America. Now, you've got to listen to this, because I get passionate when I talk about this. I ask you to join me as we st take a stand with Terry O'Sullivan and the laborers and all the organized labor and kill once and for all this goddamn right to work laws. Thank you. Terry has been leading his powerful voice. Rallies across the country calling his right to work what it really is, right to work less. All unions need to join the laborers to fight right to work in all states and kill any attempt for a national right to work law. Sisters and brothers, we are going to lose the middle class jobs if we don't take a stand now. Are you going to join Terry and me in this fight? Yeah. Are you going to join Terry and me in this fight? Yeah. To tell the politicians everywhere that if they don't support the right to work, we're going to make sure they enjoy the right to fucking retire a lot sooner than they planned. Thank you. Are you going to join Terry and I in this fight again? Yes. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to see. We're happy to welcome our USMX employers, led by Dave Adams, I got to calm down a little bit, who will address our delegates later this week. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Dave, your employees and the ILA can take a great pride in the work we accomplished last year. This Thursday, on the final day of our, con our con convention, the ILA delegates will elect a slate of office to lead them into the future. With your continued support, your powerful expressions of solidarity to the ILA and to me, I plan to run for re-election as your international president. Thank you. I ask for your continued support, and I pledge to keep fighting for you and your families, and will take on the challenges of today and tomorrow. I ask that you strengthen my office by returning a great team of executive officers with me. Dennis Daggett, the Executive Vice President. Stevie Knott, as Secretary Treasurer. Wilbur Rowell, as the General Vice President. John Baker, as General Organizer. Jim Paler and Alan Robb as the Assistant General Organizers. Benny Holland, Jr. as Executive Vice President of Emeritus. Our team pledges to keep ILA strong and global power. Th throughout this week, I will continue to lay out programs I hope will be adopted at the convention and interact during my term of office, reviewing our landmark master contract agreement on automation examining how we can straighten our union thoughts and affiliations with the national labor body like the AFL-CIO, Transportation Trade Department, Maritime Labor Alliance, and Canadian Labor Conference worldwide through the International Dockers Council and the ITF, exploring our nation's politic landscape, including the 20, 2020 President of election next year. Hearing from the top management leaders to review our new master contract, what we each must do to keep our industry prospering and growing. The ILA in their community, our work with the Hole in the Wall Gang camp, our numerous scholarship programs, our work with other major charities, our respect for our country and our flag. I will owe it, ILA will always mean. I love America. So my goal is to make a most productive and meaningful convention for our delegates 
and for all of us to enjoy time with our families, renew in friendship, and develop in new ones. You have all received the report of the President in writing from and on a flash drive you received at the registration. Over the next few days, I hope to describe the pride, the gratitude, and optimism I feel each day leading this wonderful Longshoreman Union. Fashion your seatbelts, ILA delegates, and guests, we are about to hear from some great speakers. Our mission for the next term is clear. Our work begins now. I officially call, I love doing this. I officially call the 55th convention session. Now, let's go to work. Thank you, God bless you, the ILA, God bless America, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Thank you so much.